Now back when the LeBron 20 came out, this was a shoe that was kind of like a reimagining of what the LeBron series has been up to that point. The LeBron series was all about max protect, it was max cushioning, and then you had just maximum materials and maybe some gimmicks thrown in here and there. The LeBron 20 really stripped away all of that and got right back down to basics. It was a very, very light shoe. It was a very versatile shoe. It was a low cut shoe, very different than what we've known the LeBron line to be. And in every sense of the word, it was very Kobe-esque. Now, alongside the LeBron 20, we had their takedown model, which was the LeBron Next Gen. The LeBron Next Gen had a lot of similarities in terms of design and a lot of things that it borrowed from the LeBron 20, but it just made it in a more affordable package. And I'm gonna do air quotes for that one. It was coming in at $170, $30 below the retail price of the LeBron 20. And obviously you're gonna have more premium materials on the LeBron 20 itself. But for the most part, the next gen really took a lot of the same technologies, a lot of the same design uh, cues and made it into a more afford affordable package. Fast forward, we went to the LeBron 21, which was more iterative over the LeBron 20. It took a lot of what worked for the LeBron 20, improved it in some areas and just kind of made it more flashy, uh, in many ways prettier. But what you had in terms of the takedown model is you had the follow-up to the next gen and they're calling this the next gen amped. And the next gen, next gen amped really was a just improvement over the previous design. And if anything, it borrowed elements from the air zoom generation. Now the next gen amped uh, featured a lot of the same technologies. It virtually was the same shoe just with slight modifications on the upper. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to test. I really wanted to get the shoe on the court and see how they played it. If they reminded me at all of the LeBron 20 or the LeBron 21, that's what we're gonna find out today. But before we get into the review, if you can like, subscribe, comment, any engagement at all really helps the channel to grow, helps the video to get more exposure. And for me, I would be eternally grateful for everything you guys do, for everything you have done and continue to do to support the channel. But without further ado, Let's get into this review. Now, starting off with the packaging, as we always do, the LeBron Next Gen Amped doesn't feature anything in the way of premium packaging. Um, and I think that's obvious. They don't want this to compete directly with the LeBron 20 or 21 for that matter. But in terms of the, the presentation, it is a, just a basic white box with the uh, NXXT or the Roman numeral 20 in place of the EX in Next. And then you have AMPD, uh, which I'm assuming stands for Amped. But, in general, you have the next stylized uh, with a swoosh on the front of the box. You have LeBron's signature on the sides. Um, but in general, this is a very basic setup and it kind of is reminiscent of a lot of LeBron's takedown models that I have tested in the past, more specifically the Soldier Line RIP. And then you actually have the LeBron Ambassador, which was an overseas exclusive. But in general, Nothing really surprising, especially considering it's a takedown model. Now over on the design side, the LeBron Next Gen Amped in the first game colorway is obviously paying homage to the Air Zoom Generation, LeBron's very first signature shoe in the first game colorway. They borrowed a lot of those details and brought them over to the Next Gen Amps and they're not performance details or anything like that. It's more so just kind of like borrowing design elements. So uh, starting with the toe box area, you have those perforations on the toe box that are uh, borrowed directly from the Air Zoom Generation. The upper, just like the color blocking is again borrowed directly from the air zoom generation first game um, you have the stitching on the sock liner uh, that denotes lebron's very first game the 10 29 2003 the tongue itself is a uh, perforated leather tongue borrowed directly from the azg uh, along with the stitched signature of lebron james and then a little bit of a plastic applique right below there you have the double swoosh on the lateral side and that is being borrowed directly from the next gen which was borrowed from the lebron 20. all the shoes are kind of like related in a way in the heel area you have a tab that says first game on one side and on the other you have a series of numbers i'm not entirely sure what those numbers are supposed to denote but generally anytime lebron features numbers on his shoes they generally are call out to akron ohio in some way shape or form Right below there, you have a leather cap or a synthetic leather cap that is replacing the plastic applique from the AZG uh, that was actually supposed to mimic the Hummer H2 of that kind of like era. But overall, the LeBron uh, Next Gen Amped is a very, very clean shoe. Um, I think uh, just from a design perspective, it is a very gorgeous shoe overall. Now, when it comes to the LeBron Next Gen Amped, this is a shoe that I would consider 
premium priced. It's priced at $170 US. Um, and so for that, you would expect to get premium materials in exchange for that cost. And you do, they do deliver in a good way on this shoe particularly. This does feature a mixture of genuine leathers mostly, some synthetic leathers, just a little bit of it, and then some synthetic materials in general. Uh, on the toe box and vamp area, you have that genuine leather. It looks like to be a synthetic leather on the heel cap area, replacing that plastic piece from the AZG that I talked about earlier. Um, and then again, a bunch of synthetic materials under that double swoosh. One of those swooshes does contain uh, what looks to be genuine leather. Um, but then you have a nice premium touch on the sock liner, that uh, stitched in date. Doesn't look to be like screen printed or anything like that. It is or it looks to be actually stitched into the sock liner of the shoe. Now we can't talk about the materials without talking about how the materials affect the weight. The LeBron Next Gen Amped in a size 12 and a half comes in weighing 16.3 ounces or 463 grams. This is not a heavy shoe by any means and puts it about average with all the other shoes I've tested this year. Um, you're not gonna feel the weight on your feet when you're playing. These play pretty well in terms of how the weight's distributed through the shoe. If weight is a concern for you, I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all in the LeBron Next Gen Amped. Now over on the fit and containment side, this is such a weird situation. Um, Nike's app or Nike's website, however you access Nike, they recommend you go up a half size for this shoe particularly. I don't usually see that recommendation from Nike, so I saw it and I just figured, let me go with the 12 and a half. I went with the 12 and a half and immediately getting the shoe on foot, I knew that this shoe was gonna be a little bit looser. I tied them as tight as I could and I played in them. And the one time I played in them, they hurt extremely bad. And it's not, not for the fact that they fit tight because they didn't, it's just that my foot didn't get any kind of lockdown. My foot was never kind of stable in the shoe. I never felt stable in the shoe and I gave it um, two tries and I played for probably about five hours, six hours. And each session, I just couldn't wait to get the shoe off my foot. It's just, it was just killing my foot overall. And it's a little bit of um, a letdown because I thought the shoe was gonna be great just because it features so much of the same technology from the 20 and the 21 and it just didn't live up to what I expected. So um, from a fit and containment perspective, if you're looking for a recommendation, just based on my experience, I would say, even though Nike's recommending going up a half size, I would personally recommend going true to size um, just to get a better fit. If you go up a half size, you're probably gonna have issues and I'm a wide footer. If you're a nor narrow to normal size foot, true to size is definitely the way to go. If you're a wide footer, I would still even recommend going true to size because that leather is eventually going to loosen up and conform to your feet. So if that is going to be the case and you go up a half size, you're gonna have serious issues as you play in these more and more. Now, over on the cushioning side, the LeBron Next Gen Amp features a lot of the same setup that you had on the 20 and the 21s. This has two pretty beefy uh, zoom units in the forefoot and the heel. You don't necessarily feel them when you're playing in them and that could be a good thing for some and a bad thing for others. Um, when I played in them, I didn't feel that normal bounce that you get from Zoom, and they are top-loaded Zoom units, so those are ones that you would normally feel underfoot. My only thought as to why you don't feel that feedback is probably because these are higher in PSI, meaning that bags are filled up more, creating a more firm ride. So if you are someone who wants a more firm ride, more court feel, the LeBron Next Gen Amped is gonna be the one that you wanna go with. If you want something with a, little, with a little bit more bounce, a little bit more feedback, the LeBron 21 or even the LeBron 20 at this point, uh, you may wanna stick with just because those have more responsive zoom units. Now, when it comes to the traction for the LeBron Next Gen Amped, we have the same type of traction that we saw on the LeBron 20 and 21 and then the OG uh, LeBron Next Gen. So it has what looks to be a city map of Akron, that's my assumption, um, and I don't have it confirmed, but it looks to be a map of Akron and that traction pattern, that storytelling pattern, does a great job of keeping your foot secure on the floor. I never had issues with slipping or uh, having to wipe the shoe or anything like that. That traction, pat traction pattern, while it is a storytelling pattern, doesn't actually um, take away from the traction itself. So overall, traction was fantastic and playing in them, I had no issues whatsoever. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the LeBron Next Gen Amped, there's a lot to love about the shoe. First and foremost is the design. Um, obviously, the first game colorway is incorporating a lot of what we saw on the Nike Air Zoom generation and brought it to this shoe. So I think they did a great job of incorporating all of that and making it very fluid. Uh, the cushioning tech, they brought over the cushioning tech from the LeBron 20 and 21 and incorporated it into this shoe. So you have premium cushioning technology being adopted in this shoe. 
And then last of those is the materials that they use. They used premium leathers on the upper, some textiles and, synthetic le and some synthetic leathers. Um, and I think that all combines to make it a very gorgeous looking shoe. Now we talked about all the good things going on with the LeBron Next Gen Amped. But on the flip side, there's a few things that are not so great and one thing that I would actually consider a deal breaker. First and foremost, starting off with the price, at $170, this is a premium priced shoe through and through. Compare that to the LeBron 20 and 21, which come in at $200 US. At $170, this is a premium product. Now, when you think about it, this is actually priced higher than all of Nike's other signature athletes, and that's Sabrina, KD, Book, Ja, Giannis. That's, it's priced higher than all of their other sneakers, with the exception of the Kobe line, that generally comes in at about $190. So that's one issue that I have with it. When you have a derivative of the mainline signature shoe, otherwise known as a takedown model, it is meant to be more affordable. And while yes, it is more affordable than the LeBron 20 and 21, it is still more expensive um, than a lot of other shoes, which puts it out of reach for a lot of other people. Now, when it comes to the deal breaker, the fit and containment was really an issue for me throughout my time in this shoe. Um, Nike recommends you go up a half size and I did that and getting the shoe on foot tying them as tight as I could I could never get a proper fit I could never get proper containment so if I made a cut while the traction was fantastic my foot was literally sliding all throughout the shoe if I made a cut my foot slid to the front of the shoe and so forth and so on but with that it caused an incredible amount of pain to the extent of like after about two two and a half hours of playing I had to get these shoes off my foot just to give my feet some rest. And I've never really had that issue in general, but also this year of all the shoes I've tested, I've never had that type of a problem. I didn't give it up. I didn't give up the first time and I gave the shoes another try, um, another two to two and a half hours of playing and the same issue persisted. And that just told me from a playing perspective, I will never play in these shoes again. And it's not be me being uh, mean or canceling the shoe or anything like that. It's just the fact that I really was uncomfortable in this shoe. Um, from a casual perspective, I wore them for four or five hours and I had no real issues, but that's not really indicative of the type of performance you're gonna get from the shoe. So with that, if I'm making a recommendation in terms of how you should go about getting the shoe, if you really are interested in playing this shoe, you wanna see how they play on the court, by all means do so. I would recommend getting the shoe from Nike's site, whether you be in the US or otherwise. Nike in the US offers a 60 day wear test return policy. So that means that if you play in the shoe and they end up being too big or too small, or just whatever the case may be, they just weren't the right fit for you. You can actually initiate a return with Nike and no questions asked, they'll take the shoe back and give you a refund. Um, so keep that in mind, if you're looking to get the shoe, I would recommend getting it from Nike just because of that return policy. If they work well for you, I'm happy for you, but if they don't, um, obviously utilize that return policy. But that's gonna do it for this video. If there's anything I miss or anything you would like to know about the Nike LeBron Next Gen Amped, please leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.